Good evening and uh, greetings to the name of the Lord. Before we start the chorus singing, let's look to God and pray. Shall we bow down our heads and pray to the Lord? Almighty our being God, we thank you for adding one more Sunday in our life. Lord, as we are in this pandemic situation, Lord, we are going on virtual, Lord. Lord, be with us and guide with your spirit, Lord. Once again, we thank you for giving this virtual worship, Lord. Lord, once again, we beseech you to give us the permission to go into your sanctuary and worship the Lord in the days to come. Lord, I request to bless all the congregation who has gathered here in this virtual Lord. Lord, bless all our family members. Lord, we ask you to bless today's speaker as he's giving your word, Lord, and help us to lead according to the message, Lord. Lord, as we are praising your name, Lord, be with us. Bless each and every song. It's only for your glory. Only lift up your name, my heavenly Father. We are singing unto you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let us sing to the Lord, saying, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. saying, O Lord, return into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There is no one else like you.
Almighty God, unto whom all odds are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise unto him with songs. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh! 
for our responsive scripture portion please turn to selection number 16 under the caption fellowship with christ let us make use of the new testament portion selection number 16 fellowship with christ new testament portion if then you are raised together with christ seek the things that are above where christ is seated on the right hand of god set your mind upon the things that are above on the things that are upon the earth. for he died and your life is hid with christ in god wherefore if any man is in christ he is a new creation creature the old things are passed away behold they are become new seeing that you have put off the old man with his doings and have put on the new man after the image of him that created him where there cannot be greek and jew cir- circumstances and in circumstances barbarian satan or Christ is in all put on therefore and god select holy and beloved a heart of compassion kindness kindness lowliness meekness long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving each other if any man have a complaint against any even as the lord forgave you and above all these things put on love which is the bond of perfectness and let this peace of christ rule in your hearts and be ye thankful let us all Praise the Lord by singing the hymn, Great is the Faithfulness.
the scripture portion chosen for today's online english worship service is taken from the old testament the book of daniel chapter 9 verses 1 to 9 the book of daniel chapter 9 verses beginning from 1 to the end of the ninth verse we have our dear brother online i request mr jason to read the passage for us Good evening and greetings to Good you all evening. in the mighty and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The scripture portion for today's uh, meditation is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verses 1 to 9. Chapter 9, Daniel, chapter 9, verses 1 to 9. I'm reading from King James Version. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of the Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God, and made my confession, and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts, and from thy judgments, neither have we hearkened and to the servant, the prophet, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our father, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and unto all Israel that are near, and that are far off, to all the countries whither thou hast driven them because of that trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, who has belonged confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, and to our father, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. May the Lord help us in understanding this scripture. Amen. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Gracious, heavenly, loving Father, we thank you and praise you for the blessed day thou hast given in our lives, O Master. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of each and every one of us all through the week. Lord, we especially praise thee, thank thee for taking care of each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your concern, care, protection, and provision for each and every one of us. Lord, at this moment, we join together online to praise thee, to worship thee, to glorify thee. Thank you, Lord, for the blessed opportunity thou hast given us to join together like this. Lord, at this moment, we especially pray for the pandemic situation that is prevailing in this world, O Master. Thou art our God who is in control of everything, O Master. Protect us, safeguard each and every one of us. Lord, many have lost their beloved ones. Lord, we especially uphold our dear chaplain's family, Reverend KBJ Kumar's family. We also remember Reverend Titus Nirmal Kumar's family. We also remember Brother Asun's family. The word of God who can console them, comfort them. Lord, strengthen them with thy word, O Master. Lord, in this moment, we especially pray for the people, those who are really struggling hard to maintain or to eradicate this virus from this world, O oh Master. Lord, we especially uphold the doctors, nurses, paramedical department, and all the revenue staff, police department, and municipal staff. Thank you, Lord, for giving them the good mind to serve the people, O oh Master. Lord, as they are serving the people and they are fighting against this virus, O oh Master, Lord, bless them, 
protect them, safeguard them, O Master. Lord, at this moment, we specially pray for our Bhatsar Vaiti Mitra Garu. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of them. Thank you, Lord, for protecting the whole family from this virus, O Master. Thou art our God, who is great and who is so faithful. You are El Shaddai, our fully dependable provider. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for protecting your servant's family from this dangerous virus, O Master. Lord, give them all good health and long life to do thy work, O Lord. Lord, at this moment, we also remember the elder people of our congregation, especially we uphold uh, Bernard Tangaswami Garu and Vijay Vijayam Vijay Sar's family, O Master. Thou art our God who can take care of them and protect them, safeguard them as they are in their respective homes, O Master. Lord, at this moment, we also pray for our choir and choir members and the choir directors, O Master. Thank you, Lord, for the talents you have bested upon them. Lord, as they are rendering their services unto thee, bless them abundantly, O Master. Lord, we also pray for our choir directors, Mrs. Shara Pravina. Thank you, Lord, for the talent you have bested upon her as she is rendering her services unto thee, O Lord. Bless her abundantly, bless her children, grandchild, wherever they are, O Master. Lord, we also pray for each and every family of Dowling Hall service team, Lord. Bless them. We also pray for the families who are attending this English worship service regularly, O Lord. Bless them. Give them what they need at this moment. Protect them and safeguard them, O Master. Missionary organizations at this moment, O Master, especially we remember in the evangelical mission, organizations sending the missionaries into no corners of this country, O Lord, as the missionaries are in the remote corners of this country, O Lord. Lord, protect the whole families and safeguard them and supply, pray for the Gideons International, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the national state ministry, O Lord. Lord, bless the Gideons International, Lord, as they are going to uh, come, uh, as they are going to do this uh, state convention, O Master. Be with them and guide them in a proper way so that we can meet virtually and we can take part in it, O Master. Lord, at this moment, we also pray for the people, those who are not able to join in this virtual meeting, O Master, give them another opportunity to join together and worship you, Lord. Lord, in this moment, we especially pray for the speaker, the young man, William Shubakar. Thank you, Lord, for choosing him as a vessel, as he is going to bring you a word, O Master, anoint him and speak through him, put you a word in his mouth as he is. Delivering your word, O oh Master, prepare our hearts. Lord, let your Holy Spirit minister each and every one of us. Give, the, give us attentive ears and give us right understanding to comprehend your word. Bless his family, children, wherever they are, Lord. Lord, at this moment, we commit each and everything. And we pray for each and every participant who have joined this uh, virtual meeting, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for for giving them the good mind of joining together online to worship thee, to glorify thee, bless them abundantly, and supply their needs according to your will and wish. Heaven. Once again, we commit each everything in honor to your name in Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Anthem, which is also mentioned in our Chambers Chronicle, which was written by Horatio G. Spafford after he faced traumatic events in his life. Stafford traveled to meet his wife after they lost their four daughters in a shipwreck. But the power of God 
inspired him to write this hymn, to write this hymn as his ship passed near where his four daughters had died. This hymn brings us hope in the midst of hopeless situation and kindles our hearts to look unto our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our comforter, author, and a finisher of faith.
Good evening, friends. I take this opportunity on behalf of our on behalf of our Bassar and all committee members and welcome you all to this online English worship service. The speaker for the coming Sunday will be Reverend Jenny Christopher, who is holding a responsible position in the evangel Indian Evangelical Mission. Today's speaker, William Schubacher, is not a new person to the choir members, but is a well-known person to the English service. William Schubacher is working as a software professional and using most of his time preaching the word of God. In fact, he is an upcoming young man and very busy in God's work. And therefore, I request the congregation and the participant, please uphold him in your personal prayers. He is married and blessed with two children. We also encourage all the young people to come up and be ready to take up the second line leadership. I believe all of you have received this month's Chambers Chronicle. Those people who have not yet received, I requested you to contact our bursar by phone and give your address so that our bursar will definitely post a copy to you. In this, in this Chambers Chronicle, the first page comprises of the editor's corner, editor's corner, highlighting our responsibility as Christian church. Then the chaplain's desk about the blessed Pope. Coming to the second page is the children's page where a small passage is given about the stories of the Holy Bible. And I encourage all the parents Please make your children to go through this passage and answer the questions given below and hand over the answer sheets to the chief examiner, Mrs. Malati Sharatgaru. The third page is about a great song which is already displayed now. It is Well With My Soul, where you can see the story of the author who underwent traumatic conditions. And when he had lost all his four daughters in a shipwreck, the power of God inspired him to write this hymn. It's a wonderful hymn. Just now we heard, I request the congregation, please go through that. Again, in the fourth page, the highlights and the write-up about the word by late B. Swamidasgar. I re really read that, and I think all the people who are reading this, you will be inspired by that. So I request all the participants who have received this copy, please go through this Chambers Chronicle, and we appreciate if you can send your reflections either to me or to our Basar. Thank you. This is the time for offerings. As the song is sung, I request all the participants please remit your offerings to the number displayed on the screen.
Dear friends, last week we have received a special offering from Sharath Stevenson Garu of rupees 10,000 rupees. And we also received 2,000 rupees from Priskrilla Srinivas Garu. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Gracious Heavenly Loving Father, we thank you and praise you for the blessed time that has given us to join together online to praise thee, to worship thee, to glorify thee. Thank you, Lord, for, for the people, those who have remitted their offerings online to thy service, O Master. Lord, at this moment, we also uphold Brother Sherrod Stevenson's family, and we also remember Priscilla Srinivas' family. Thank you, Lord, for giving them the good mind of giving unto thee as they have given unto thee, O Master. Bless them abundantly. Bless their children and grandchildren wherever they are. Lord, at this moment, we also pray for the people, those who have a share in these offerings. Bless all the congregation and bless the givers and use these offerings for the extension of thy kingdom. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Shall we all sing together the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Oh, the friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry, everything to God in prayer. we often forfeit, oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in Oh, Lord. 
before William Shubaker could deliver the word of God, shall we all raise our hands and hold the Bibles and sing the chorus? The best book to read is the Bible. Now I request William Shubhakar to deliver the word of God. Good evening, everyone, and greetings to in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a blessed privilege for me to share the word of God in this uh, Chambers Memorial English Worship Service. And I thank the Almighty God for giving me this blessed opportunity. I also thank uh, Brother David Livingston Garu like, and uh, our Bursar Vaitimit Rankal Garu and also uh, our choir directors, Sarah Pravina Garu and uh, our committee and all the elders and also Brother Johnny and uh, Sunil and every one of you for encouraging me and uh, uh, giving me this opportunity. And uh, at this time, I would like to uh, remember what our dear uncle K.B. Jake Margar, he has been a source of inspiration for me and uh, encouraged me a lot. And I'm thankful for him and his family and uh, praying for his family. Before going to the word of God, let me read one verse from uh, Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6. I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent and give him no rest till he establishes, until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Let's have a small word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the blessings, Lord, thou have bestowed all on, upon us all through this week, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to come into this meeting, Lord, to gather virtually and to praise you and worship your duty, Lord. Lord, till now we were able to worship you and praise you, Lord. Lord, as we're going to meditate upon your word, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, speak to me and speak through me. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. One day there was a, a pastor delivered the message on one Sunday. And uh, he was standing outside greeting uh, everyone. And as the people were coming, one guy came and he wished him, uh, shook his hand and said, uh, Pastor, you are greater than Einstein. Uh, he said, thank you. And he was happy. And uh, uh, the guy went away. And then this pastor got a doubt. Why did he compare me with Einstein? He is a scientist. Uh, uh, how I am related to him? So the whole week he was uh, restless. And then he was waiting for the next Sunday. So when the Sunday came, he was searching for that guy. So when he came, he went and asked, brother, you, you, have, you said, I'm greater than Einstein. How am I related to Einstein? So that guy said, pastor, Einstein is a great scientist, you know. When he was delivering uh, his uh, uh, speeches, uh, when there are 100 people in the room, only three to four people were able to understand. But when you speak, not even a single person can understand your speech, Pastor. So you are greater than Einstein. So I hope I am not greater than Einstein. So uh, this is my first time uh, preaching. So you'll be able to understand my uh, message. So here, the verse, if you see, Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6 and 7. Here, God is uh, telling one thing. He said, I have set watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They shall never hold their peace day or night. You who make mention of the Lord, do not keep silent. So this is talking about prayer warriors. 
actually Isaiah chapter 61 and 62 talks about the, the return of the exile. People, when they were, uh, they went to exile in Babylon and they were returning. So this prophecy is about that exile. So the prophet is telling, I'm praying to God that he will bring all the people back here and he's, still in, and he's uh, uh, inviting everybody, you come and join me, let us pray and ask God that he will bring uh, people into Jerusalem. He will build the temple in Jerusalem. So he says a beautiful word. He says, you do not rest. You keep praying and you do not rest. And one more thing he says, don't allow God to rest. What a beautiful uh, thing. In Telugu, actually, one uh, it's written, uh, the word used is very beautiful word. It said, Yehova, Napaka Kartalara. You are reminders of God. What a blessed a privilege this is. You are, you are, you are reminding God. So when we pray, God will remember his covenant. When we pray, God will remember his promise and he will act. But does it mean that God forgets and should we remind him? It's not like that. God wants us to be a part of his work. He wants us to be, uh, uh, he wants us to be as his co-workers. We all know when he created the universe. He just spoke one word and the entire universe came into existence. But now when he made man, he wants, uh, he wants us to be involved in his work, to work along with him. So he's waiting for somebody to pray. When somebody prays, he wants to act. When somebody prays and reminds him of his promises, he wants to give that promises. So let's see one, uh, uh, three, four examples of, uh, based on the time that we have. I'm not going to details, but uh, the scripture portion that is read to us is Daniel chapter nine. And this, uh, here we see a beautiful prayer uh, by Daniel. We all know the story of Daniel. When Israel people, they sinned against God, God has warned them, they, uh, God sent several prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, all these uh, prophets, they have warned people that God is going to punish you. Uh, you have to, listen to God's word, but they did not listen. And uh, uh, God sent Babylonian kingdom, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar came and they, he, he destroyed the Jerusalem temple, the city, and he took uh, people to captives uh, into, into Babylon. And uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and several people, they went to uh, Babylon as, uh, as slaves. But there we all know, uh, the king had a, got a dream and nobody was able to interpret that dream. So Daniel and his friends prayed and uh, God revealed the meaning of the dream to Daniel. So Daniel went to the king and uh, he interpreted the dream to the king. So king was very happy and he made Daniel as a uh, uh, a, a prime minister to that kingdom. He was equivalent to a prime minister in the kingdom of Babylon. We all know Babylonian kingdom, it is a superpower in those, uh, in those days. There were only uh, three continents there and uh, uh, Babylonian kingdom has was ruling over the entire world in those days. So now Daniel uh, being the prime minister of that kingdom, uh, ruling over the kingdom, he is in a great position. He's, like, he's at the top position. He has a good job, nice salary, nice name and fame, money and everything he has. So as he was uh, work, uh, there, one day he understood that God has given a promise. What is that promise is that God said, I am punishing you. I'm sending you to uh, Babylon, but after 70 years, I'm going to remember you and I will bring you back to Jerusalem. So Daniel uh, understood that this 70 year period is coming to an end. So he wanted to remind God. So if you see Daniel chapter nine, uh, in, in verse two, Daniel chapter nine, verse two, in the first year of his reign, Daniel under, understood by the books, the number of years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So now Daniel is a guy who's always praying to God 
always reading the scriptures so he knew about this prophecy he knew he knew that god is going to uh, deliver them after 70 years he knew that god is a faithful god when he gives a promise he will definitely uh, do, he will do that so now this promise if you look at uh, jeremiah we can find it in jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11 and 12 we can see jeremiah chapter 25 uh, verse 11 and 12 we can see there that this promise is written there 25 11 and 12 it says and this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment and these nations shall serve the king of babylon 70 years and then it will come to pass when 70 years are completed that I will punish the king of Babylon and the nation, the land of Chaldeans for their iniquity. So this is the prophecy that Jeremiah told. And even in chapter 29, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 10 also, we see that for thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed in Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you. So Daniel knew this prophecy. He knew the scriptures. He was always reading, praying. So he knew the scriptures. So now what he's doing, he's coming and praying to God. In Daniel chapter 9, we see that he is praying to God. But if you see how he's praying, he is he, he, he's in a very good position there. He's an equivalent to prime minister. He has good wealth. He has he's a great job, nice name and fame. But see what he's doing in Daniel chapter 9, verse 3, he says, Then I set my face toward the Lord God to make requests by prayer and supplications with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. He has a royal clothes to wear, but he took out those royal clothes and he wore sackcloth. He pour ashes on him. He has uh, delicious food to eat. He's very rich there. But he put all that food aside and he's fasting. He's praying to God. He's fasting. He took away his clothes. He took away everything, all the luxuries that he have. And he's fasting and praying, not one or two days, but several days, he's fasting and praying. He's praying to God and see how beautiful he's praying to God. The entire uh, chapter, if you can read when we go home, it's a beautiful prayer we can see in, uh, just in verse 4, he is reminding God of the covenant. He says, and I prayed to Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him. So he's reminding God of his covenant. He says, you have made a covenant that we are your people you will bless us. You will take care of us. So please remember your covenant. And he says, we are sinners. We have, uh, you have, you are a righteous God. You have kept the covenant from your end, but from our end, we have sinned. So you are righteous. You did a good thing. It is right thing for us to be punished here. But Lord, there is another thing. You are a merciful God. So remember us. Have mercy on us and remember the covenant and please take us back as you promised. Daniel, who is in a great position there, and he doesn't need to pray this because Daniel is now a very old man. He is uh, almost 90 years. When he came to Babylon, he was a young guy. If you assume that uh, he's around 17 to 18 years, now it's almost 70 years. So he is almost 85 to 90 years old. So now he cannot go back to Jerusalem. He cannot go and build a temple. He cannot build a house for him and stay in Jerusalem. So there is no need for Daniel to think about Jerusalem. But he has a burden for his, uh, for his Lord. He has a burden for Jerusalem. He has a burden for his temple. He has a burden for his people. So he's praying. He has a burden for his next generation. He's praying, God, please, please take us back so that the next generation will build the temple and stay in Jerusalem as uh, your people. When, uh, when Daniel prayed this prayer, God listened to this prayer. God acted and God raised uh, the King Cyrus, inspired King Cyrus to give a decree. And we see in Ezra chapter one, we see that King Cyrus gave a decree 
that God has commanded me to build a temple for him in Jerusalem. So whoever are his people, you can go back and build the temple. See, the prayer of Daniel has moved the king and the king gave a decree to go and build the temple of Jerusalem. What is the need for Daniel to pray? He's not going back. He's an old man. He's not going to build a, a house there. He has a very nice job here. He has good wealth. He's highly placed there. What is the need for him? Why should he think about Jerusalem? But he has a burden for his people. He has a burden for his uh, God's church, God's temple. So he's praying to God. How he's praying? He is humbling himself. He is wearing sackcloth. He's removed his royal cloth. He's wearing sackcloth and he is fasting and praying to God. And God sent people back to Jerusalem under the leadership of Jerubabel and high priest Joshua. People came and rebuilt the temple there. If you see another person, Ezra. Now, Ezra, after 60 years, these people came back and they rebuilt the temple there. And then after 60 years, a second group is coming back under the leadership of Ezra. Now, if you look at Ezra, I'm not going into details of the life of Ezra, but he is, he is also well-placed in the kingdom of Babylon. If you look at Ezra chapter seven and uh, verse six, it says that he is a scribe and whatever he requested, the king granted him. He had a good rapport with the king. Whatever he said, the king would listen. He had a good relationship with the king. So Ezra was nicely placed there. He had a nice job there. He had a nice, a secure job, good uh, salary, and he was leading a good life there. But then he also had that burden for his people. So he took the permission of the king and he came back with the second group after 60 years. So when he came back, when he found there, what he found there was a very depressing for him. The people who came back, they rebuilt the temple, but these people became complacent. They compromised with the people. Why? Because they were a small uh, number there. The other people who were living there, these people, they were afraid of those people. So what they did is they compromised with those people. They married their children. They gave uh, this. They they, in, uh, they married the children, and they started uh, uh, going to their festivals. They they started living as uh, leading the life of those people. God has chosen Israel to be a special nation, a holy nation, not to mingle and uh, uh, not to uh, perform these uh, things that other people do. But these people, they were afraid of the other people and they started compromising and they started living uh, along according to their lifestyles. When Ezra came there, he was very depressed and he started weeping and mourning. And in Ezra chapter nine, we see that Ezra also, he took out his clothes, he put a sackcloth, he put ashes on him, he fell down and he was mourning and weeping for for asking God to bring revival there. He was praying, God, you, have, you are a merciful God. You brought us back from Babylon, but again, we, are, we have sinned against you. Again, we have fallen back. Again, we have compromised and started living as the heathen people. But Lord, please have mercy on us. Even Ezra prayed, there was a great revival there. All the people started weeping and they were praying. And all the people came, voluntarily they came and said, we have sinned. We are going to remove all things that God doesn't like here. We will again uh, consecrate ourselves and we will make a covenant with God and we will again be like his children. When Ezra prayed, there was a great revival in that community, in the church, in the temple. What is the need for Ezra? to pray, to have this burden. Ezra also has a, a secure job there. He's very close to the king. 
he has good salary good wealth and whatever he wants he gets there whatever he says king will do for him what is the need for ezra to pray for these people because ezra had a burden for the lord he wanted to bring revival in the people today we complain about many things we complain about other people when there is when when some things are wrong things are happening we always complain but do we have the burden to pray that god bring revival in our place bring revival here isra had that burden one more person i'll not take much time i'll just uh, uh, take one or two minutes we see nehemiah in chapter 1 nehemiah chapter 1 we see nehemiah also he is also the cup bearer to the king so he was very close to the king we all know the king uh, these people they will test what the king eats and then they will uh, offer it to the king give it to the king so only a trusted person will be in that job so nehemiah's job is to uh, test everything and serve it to the king so he was very close to the king but when people came and he asked how is jerusalem they said the walls are broken jerusalem is desolate when he heard that he was burdened and he took away his clothes and he was fasting and praying he was fasting and praying so he prayed and then he went to the king nobody should go to the king with a dull face because we should always be happy in the presence of the king but when he went there king asked what happened he said this is what is happening to my my temple my god's temple my city is the walls are broken and it's in complete desolate state so king said what do you want i want to go and uh, uh, build the walls he said okay the king said you go so nehemiah came after 14 years after 14 years of ezra's edition ed- uh, uh, nehemiah came as a third group and he came and rebuilt the walls of jerusalem what is the need for nehemiah to pray not one day it is written he prayed for several days he fasted for several days and prayed what is the need for nehemiah he had a nice job there he was very close to the king secure job nice family nice life uh, nice uh, house and everything whatever he wanted he had but he had that burden for his temp- his god his temple god's temple his people his city the holy city jerusalem so he left his job and he risked his life and came back and rebuilt the temple uh, the walls of jerusalem there and in this as these things are happening between the first edition and the second edition there is the story of esther we all know about esther when there was a decree made that all the jews jews should be killed we know esther also prayed she is a queen she took away that royal clothes and she wore that sack clothes and she was fasting and praying for 3 days when she prayed and went to the king and told everything that is happening the king gave a decree that all the jews should be saved so what she asked god gave what is the need for the queen esther to pray to fast for 3 days because she had that burden for her people for the lord she might have been killed there but then she had that burden she fasted and prayed what is the need for daniel to pray to fast and pray for several days he has a great job nice job a good position wealth fame and everything that he can enjoy his life is not going to go back to jerusalem he doesn't have anything uh, related to jerusalem but he is he has that burden for the lord for his people for his church he want to is he want his church to be built he want his people to be a special a holy nation again so he prayed and god delivered what is the need for ezra to go back to leave his job to go back and 
pray and bring revival. He stayed there and he, uh, he and Nehemiah, he both, uh, they have uh, set everything right there. What is the need for Ezra? What is the need for Nehemiah? What is the need for Queen Esther? She is a queen. She can enjoy her life. But what she did, she fasted and prayed for three days. She risked her life and for the people of the Lord. Today, what is our burden? We are worried about our jobs. We are worried about our families. We are worried about our health. Do we have the burden for our church? Do we have the burden for our community? Do we have the burden about the ministry? Do we have the burden for the Lord? What is the need for Daniel to do, to pray, to spend his time, to talk to the king? What is the need for Ezra to leave his job and go, go and uh, re bring revival? What is the need for Nehemiah to go and build the walls of Jerusalem? What is the need for King Queen Esther to risk her life and talk to the king and save all the Jews? Jews? What is the need for our Lord Jesus Christ he was equal with the Lord, with God. He left his glory being equal to the God. He came, he became a servant. He took the form of a servant and gave his life for us. What is the need for Jesus Christ to give his life for us, for sinners like us? Today, God is telling I have set you as the watchman on the walls of Zion. All the people, the children of God, we are chosen to be as the watchmen on the walls of Zion. God is telling, you pray, I will act. Remind me, I will act. Remind me of my promises, I will act. Remind me of my covenant, I will act. He says, you don't rest until I do. And you don't allow me to rest. What a great privilege this is given to us. We are the children of God. We are the reminders of Jehovah. We are here to remind him to pray and to remind God of his promises and covenant. Today, I would like to encourage all of you we need to take time to pray for our church. We need to take time to pray for our community. We need to take time to pray for our friends and families because intercessory prayer is standing in the gap between God and his people. When we pray, God will act. When we pray, God will bring revival. When we pray, God will do great things and we, we will be a blessing for many people, our, our city, our community, our church and everywhere. So as God has set us as reminders for him, as watchmen on the walls of Zion, let us take time to pray, to bring revival, to, to, to pray and uh, ask God to remind him of the promises and his covenant. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for giving us this, this opportunity, Lord, to gather online and pray and worship you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you've given to us, Lord. We are set on the walls of Zion. We are the watchmen, Lord. You've given us the privilege to remind you, Lord. When Daniel prayed, Lord, you act, Lord. What is the need for Daniel? But he had that burden. Ezra had that burden for his people, for your people, Lord. Nehemiah had the burden to leave his job and come and build the walls. Queen Esther had that burden to go to the king's presence and plead on behalf of your people, Lord. Lord, bring revival in our Christian community, Lord, as we become complacent, as we are busy with our jobs, as we are busy with our lifestyle, we have become, uh, everything is fast, fast forward, Lord. We have, we have become busy, Lord. Lord, help us to take time to, to be a part of your ministry, to bring revival and do your ministry, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Prayer is the key to open the gates of heaven. Daniel reminded God about the covenant he made with his people. 
Daniel know that God is a merciful God, and therefore he confessed the sins of his people and prayed God to remember his people. As a result of that, God raised Cyrus, and thus he commanded Cyrus to release the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. Daniel was burdened, Ezra was burdened, Nehemiah was burdened. All these people were burdened for the nation of Israel. Therefore, it is a meaningful message for each and every one of us. God has kept each and every one of us as watchmen over our nation. Many souls are perishing, and it is our responsibility, and we need to have the same burden for our nation, and we need to remind the Lord uh, the promises that he made with his people so that God will act and deliver each and every citizen of India and he will make uh, and he will make uh, the people to enter into his kingdom and therefore it's a meaningful ex exhortation and meaningful message inspiring message I thank William Schubacher for his meaningful exhortation may God bless him and use him abundantly in the days to come. Thank you, Williams. May God bless you. Shall we all close this worship service by singing the hymn, Abide With Me.
shall we all say lord's prayer and close with benediction our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done as it is in heaven give us our day uh, this day our daily bread forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for thine is the kingdom power and glory forever and ever amen may the love of our father and the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ and the sweet communion of the holy spirit abide with us now and forevermore amen amen and amen small request for everyone can you please uh, unmute your video so that i can have it take a picture yes so there are nearly 25 participants are in today's worship right now so requesting all everyone all the 25 people to unmute your videos so i will take a picture Twenty-five is a good number. Improvement over yes, the sir. last. Yes, sir. Twenty. Improvement over the last number, last week's yes. number. Till uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten, ten to go. Have you done now? Yes. Can you unmute your video now? Yes. Yes, Sunil. No, no, your video now. You are muted. No video. Yes, Anna. And Is it requesting, requesting Ritika Pearl, Ramesh Babu, Roja, Munni, David, Sam Salman, Vincent Kola, Prashant Kiran, and Divya Salman to unmute your videos. Can you please? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Dali, Bangalore. So, everybody, can I have a smile, please? Can I have a smile? Yeah. Six to go. Six to go. Okay, smile. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very good. David, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Sir. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Sunil. Sir, 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 good evening. Good evening, uh, good evening sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, Congratulate Mr. William yes, Shubaka. Yes, sir. William, 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 where are you? William, where are you? William. William, thank you for the thank you, thank you, thank you, Anna. Thank you so much, William. Congratulations. Happy to see you. Really, you, really Anna. happy. I remember yeah, your message in Nehemiah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah I, I was preaching, I was remembering that day. Yes, William. Williams. Really, really happy. William, thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Good Anna. message. Good message. Good message, William. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Anna. That's good. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah, William, uh, uncle is there. The, uh, Salman uncle. Morning, uncle. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, uncle. The Salman uncle is uh, Mamagaru of William. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we know that. We know that. So God bless all the work we are doing and have a safe life. Thank you, sir. Thank you, and sir. We are also been with Divya. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Mighty Mitra. No, sir. I'd like to thank the little one, Naju, for uh, being a participant in today's worship service. Hopefully, next week uh, she will give a special number with, along with her. Sure, sure, sure. Sunday school.